Dear brothers and sisters, glory be to God and I welcome you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It gives me a great pleasure and I'm deeply honored to be part of these sessions and I want to thank our loving Father who had been absolutely gracious. In this world you look around, there are a lot of people who are dead in disasters, pestilence, poverty, sickness, diseases and all sorts of tragic events. But the very reason why you and I are alive is because of his mere, mere grace and mercy. And um, I always would like to, you know, testify this. Why? Why? Because anything and everything, I don't like to take it for granted. And the reason is, it is not to be taken for granted. <laughs> Simple, right? You will definitely understand this when you get closer to God and start looking at your past. There were so many thing, things that happened, so many unprecedented events that happened. And God had been tremendously merciful that he protects you, protect me, protects me. And, and he's been uh, God, the God who gives us peace, in, instills peace. And in the midst of the troubles, he still instills peace. Okay, a warm welcome to the series where we are dealing through this subject where we are talking from the perspective of obedience and disobedience yeah and i am strongly convicted that i need to finish this series before i continue with anything else because it's been going on for some time and maybe i will need another five to ten sessions why don't i go full fledged and try to finish this therefore um, we can kick off another couple of new series and the other one is ongoing um, that that's a pretty long one we are done with 60 plus sessions genealogy and evolution of christian congregation that's that's hanging in the midair <laughs> uh, we are talking from the foundational principles of jesus and we are stuck with the law of forgiveness there and i couldn't finish it yeah i, I will go there in a moment forgive me um, want you to pray for my ministries pray for the time pray for the health pray for every situation that will enable me to speak and explain from the word of God. A warm welcome again. And today we are going to um, meditate from the word of God. That is Leviticus 26, 1 to 14 will be our meditation verse. And um, this specific chapter is very, very useful for many people who are bound to old covenant standards and also those that are bound to both old and new covenant standards what is this old covenant and new covenant without new old covenant there is no new covenant and never ever do a high jump many people you know high jump right they just high, high jump in olympics uh, what some people even go for an high jump of what uh, eight meters nine meters wow um like the people do that long jump, or so not high jump, long jump, sorry. Uh, and they jump over and then they skip. No. Bible always speaks the truth and every word written in the Bible is absolutely for your good and my good. And none of these are meant to be um, abandoned. Many of you understand this truth, right? Abandoned. And none of these are meant to be abandoned, rather all of these are meant to be followed and why it must be followed is because Jesus himself followed he said follow me as I um, as I uh, imitate the love of the father and Paul said follow me as I imitate the love of my Christ right there can't be any better reasons as why you and I are always supposed to stand by the word of God and for the word of God and live off the word of God and the very reason is because it is just going to help us to get closer and closer and closer so you won't miss the mark that's the point my beloved brother sister listening to me you won't miss the mark what is its mark divine will and plan of God that he had predestined for you and me before you and I were sent into our mother's womb yeah that's why Jesus never would take any law um, of Moses for granted 
but rather he would definitely uh, you know try not try his best he always um, you know followed those laws and uh, he he would never disobey any of the laws of moses and that's why jesus challenges in john 8 right any of you can come forward and tell me if there is any sin in me which includes any of you can come forward and tell me in what way i have disobeyed the law of moses the old covenant standards and doctrines that you are able to abuse me yes yeah you you're welcome come and abuse me all right i found my verse matthew chapter 5 verse 17 matthew 5 17 do not think that i came to destroy the law or the prophets law or the prophets jesus never came to put in put up dominance right to instill dominance you see there was great competition among the prophets when jesus said or announced that i hey the son of man is going to be crucified you know what these 12 disciples said hey jesus why don't you go little forward and they all start to discuss who is going to replace there was so much of hunger for powers and dominance and jesus had every right to subdue everyone right under him and make them submissive but he never did he always had fought for the rights of the people yeah and built that confidence in them those that are feeling hopeless he built in hope in them saying that you shall not live like this in depression and loneliness in in the state of you know you you know you uh, you, you may be living in this uh, state of being de- deprived you, you need not live why because the father in heaven is there the holy spirit your helper is there and i am there as your intercessor you are my elder brother jesus built that hope he did not come to destroy or inst- and, and uh, what to say empower over people and treat them as his captives and slaves you know i come from heaven you bunch of sinners come here kneel down right in front of me <laughs> never never he was a man who walked with humility and love philippians 2 1 to 5 you take and read and i did not come to destroy but to fulfill he did not come to destroy the f- law of moses which means everything that we are discussing from the book of leviticus the previous session we discussed from the book of leviticus chapter 20 and today we are discussing from the book of leviticus chapter 26 1 to 14 which means jesus went through all of this yeah without without slipping a single letter i would say he studied the scriptures and he lived by the scriptures therefore he taught from the scriptures and he also taught more of the scriptures by the help of the holy spirit as instructed by his father in heaven leviticus 20 talks about this promise of blessing and retribution yeah if you don't obey then what are the post consequences when you walk contrary to the word of god you shall taste the anger of god i want to read from this chapter and very important right many people think oh god is bound to compassion slow to anger he he did not mean as if some 145 8 and 9 many people quote it right slow to anger but it did not say that he will never be angry at you why because another verse is there some 139 he will not strive with the spirit of man forever neither will he hold his anger forever one at some point of time there is breaking point yeah you keep on insulting the blood covenant and the son of god and the holy spirit is going to lose his temper some point and he walks off your life he puts you down and he hands you over to the to the devil and the bunch of satan are marrying to rule over you and therefore you <laughs> you you uh, what to say you have a feast in the lake of fire along with these bunch of demons that will be the situation beloved old covenant yes god the father sends serpents god the father sends fire from heaven and burns up people god the father sends up adversaries and they come and kill and destroy and take away them as captives and blind their eyes and etc but here in the new covenant god the father does nothing none of these now and he walks off your life and therefore the evil spirits take control over you and all these are being recorded in the book of life against your account and you got to give an account of what you had done against the father and his son and the holy spirit against the trinity in that white throne judgment day you know and that's going to be terrible you think of it you will i i feel all horrified always leviticus 26:1 you shall not make idols for yourself neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar 
Shall you write up for yourself, nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. Pretty much applies to all the idolaters who bow down before some idol in some form. Yeah, they make idols of animals. They make idols of God's creations like moon, sun, this and that. Yeah, and I was a Catholic. They make idols of Saint Paul, Saint Peter, Saint uh, you know uh, Mother Mary. All this, and they bow, bow down and they celebrate feasts and they worship them. This is one category. The other category, let's talk about the Pentecost category and spiritual churches. What are your idols, beloved? You are saying that, oh, there is no idol of Peter and Mark and Luke in my house. Fine. But you have the idol of pornography. You have the idol of adultery. You have the idol of speaking lies. You have the idol of lusting after other women and other person's property and this and that. Those are idols too. Nobody is going to be spared on the day of judgment. You have to give an account of every deed. But understand it properly. What is the deed? What is right and what is not right. And that's exactly what is right goes to the obedience category. What is not right goes against God. And that is the disobedience category. Contrary to obedience is disobedience. And you and I will have to always press hard towards perfection. Yeah, When you bow down to it, God says, you shall keep my sabbaths and reverence, my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Those that are the children walking in obedience, they have that reverence. Yeah, As much as you have that freedom to approach the throne room of God in the name of Jesus, you have access. Wonderful, right? That's the power of grace. Jesus got that new freedom. We are liberalized. Yeah. You read, you go through the day of atonement, um, um, what to say, the day of atonement uh, uh, series, what we have done, you will pretty much understand how tough it is to access the throne room of God, that inner sanctuary. There are a lot of principles they had to follow, traditions. Look, uh, Leviticus 16, Leviticus 10, you read, you will understand. And Deuteronomy also, a few books are there. I've described all of that, those in you know, 35 plus sessions, teachings are there. But Jesus broke all of the, those and God is the keys to the kingdom of heaven and throne room of God that you can reach out to him but never ever compromise on the reverence. Children who are obedient to God will always understand, hey, he is still God. Yeah, he is God the Father. Father, yes, full of love, but God was full of fury, full of anger against, not against the children of God, but against the unholy deeds. Therefore, Watch out when you enter into his presence. Sanctify, consecrate yourself and don't be playful with him. This will be the attitude of an obedient child. You are an obedient child. You will call him daddy and all that, but you will have a, you will have a lot of sense uh, of respect, I would say. You, you will focus God with a lot of respect. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain and seasons. The land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Your threshing shall last till the time of vintage and the vintage shall last till the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. This is about the materialistic blessings. Very important, right? When you live on this world, I'm not a materialistic preacher, but then I believe in materialistic prosperity, right? Um, the reason is for everything that you want to live in this world, you need money. Money is an important aspect, but... Money is a good servant, but a bad master. You need to learn not to be miserly, at the same time not to be a spendthrift. Right? You learn to always yeah, respect that money, but don't worship the money. Respect the money in the sense, spend it wisely and give it to people, but don't give it to people that are coming to cheat you. Uh, what it means is like, when you get into the obedience category, Bible says that a God is the one who will give you rain in the season. Rain means what? All of a sudden rain comes, you know, promotion comes, new car comes. A good wife, God gives. Good husband, God gives. Bunch of good children. Yeah. And good church, good pastor, good boss, good subordinates, good colleagues, good neighbors. Good men. God gives good men. In the book of Isaiah it says. Yeah. And honor and opportunities cometh from the Lord. Bible says. And all these things are possible. 
not without you falling in line, being an obedient child of God. And even to this day, it is pretty much needed, right? This blessing is needed from God. Why? Because how do you clear your bills, credit card bills and this and that and pay your school uh, children's school fees and yeah, fill up the petrol in the tank or else what happens? You go by walk and all that and you end up in all sorts of problems and you're not able to repay the loan. You're a debtor. Possible extent, don't take loans if you're not able to repay it. Or have a mortgage, right? Where in the worst case scenario, you're able to sell something and repay. Never stand in the middle of the streets with your children. Yeah? Being a debtor and that, that's the worst thing that could happen to the children of God. And that happens to many children of God. Why? Because they are not in alignment to the word of God. And why? I told you, God walks off your life. And the devil deceives you to take these loans and buy new cars and switch jobs and this and that. And you end up in all sorts of problems, one after the other. You're finished. It will ask, it will feel, it will, it will, I mean, the devil, the even unclean spirits will make you feel as if the rain has been showered, the prosperity is showered, but then that's not going to be long lasting. You will see that. Sooner or later, it's taken off. Then Bible says in Leviticus 26, 6, I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. Terrors of the night, Bible, this uh, talks in Psalm 91, right? Terrors of the night. And the psalmist writes this. Many people, you know, they are afraid to wake up in the morning because they don't know how to face their boss. They don't know how to face the debt. That is due, right? And they don't know how to face their wife. <laughs> A lot of funny things happens, right? But you will be lying down in peace and you'll be getting up in hope and confidence and none can make you afraid. In fact, Bible says in Psalm 18, 44, the foreigners will be afraid of you hearing your name and they will be submitting to you, Bible says. That will be the blessing God gives you. I will... I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. Sword means what? All poverty, disasters, pestilence, COVID situation, coronavirus entered into so many homes. Many people are dead and gone. But the beloved brother and sister listening to me, you have not gone through it. Never ever think because you are righteous and all that. No, because God respects you. The little respect that you have shown to him, God had ensured that he had blessed you back. Multiple faults. I want you to take a note of all this. Right? And this will be the inheritance of all the children who walk in obedience to the word of God. And the next thing tells, fourthly, you will chase your enemies and they fall by the sword before you. Old covenant, it's all about fighting your enemies with sword and uh, spears and bows and arrows and this and that. But here, the new covenant standards, it's fighting against the powers of darknesses, principalities and heavenlies. The evil spirits, the unclean spirits, with the help of those spiritual weapons given to us in Ephesians 6. Verses 9 to 18 you read. Sword of the spirit, gospel of peace, belt of truth and uh, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness. Right? All the I told only five but there is a sixth one always I forget. Please go through the Bible. All these things are nothing but the armor of God. The word of God is nothing but the armor of God. You fight with the word against the evil powers. And God will ensure the sword does not go through your land. The destructing angel will skip your place. Why? Because you are being protected by the blood of Jesus. You are being purchased for a price. Because Jesus went through all the sufferings. He carried all the sicknesses, curses, diseases. Upon him that you and I need not go through it. Matthew 8, 17 says. 1 Corinthians 6, 20 says this. We are God's property. No one had, no one have authority to touch us without God permitting. God permits sometimes. Why? Because you need that correction. Yeah. You become a rebel to God. You become an adversary to God. And God still loves you. And he doesn't walk off your life. But he gives you that second chance. And that millionth chance. And still you are so loving 
to a bunch of unclean spirits, you love their presence, then God says, fine. Go ahead with your choice and he walks off your life. That's when you will see the sword going through the land, which means what? It will wipe away everything that you have. Job chapter 1, you take and read, disaster of the disaster, all unprecedented events. Yeah, he gives that permission. He opens the hedges one after the other and the devil even touches Job's health and you know what happens to him. Beloved, why don't you hide under the shadow of his wings where there is safety, Bible says. Where there is health and healing, Bible says. Malachi 4.2, Jeremiah 33, six. Why are we not taking attention of God's voice and commandments? Yeah, you will chase your enemies, Bible says. People will be scared of you. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to fight. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. It's talking about the numbers, right? We are minorities. Don't you think so? The whole nation may come against it, but they're not able to crush us yet. Israel, the smallest nation almost in the world. As big as Bangalore, that's it. Bangalore is really big. I live in Bangalore. Yeah. It's as big as that, but you know, no one is able to touch Israel because God's chosen people, God's own country. And that's the blessing. No sword of the spirit shall travel through your land. Sorry, no sword shall travel through your land and you will chase and confront your enemies and they'll be scared of you. But I will look on you favorably. To, to whom it belongs, all these blessings, those that walk in obedience. And what is obedience? We have spoken enough in the series, beloved. This is our... 30th session or something like that, right? We have spoken enough. I want you to come from lesson one. And you will. I have described, right? In the initial few sessions, I have described what is obedience. And how God loves those that are obedient. Because there is a saying, obedience is better than sacrifice. I desire, sacrifice, I desire obedience, not sacrifice. Because all that is in the world belongs to me. If I want, would I not kill some animals and drink its blood? But that doesn't, sat, you know... Uh, quench my thirst or bring satisfaction. God says this, For I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful, multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. Favor of God is the shield to our life. Bible says in Psalms chapter 5 and verse 12. Yeah. And favor of God multiplies us. Bible says in Leviticus 26 and verse 9. And the same favor Samuel had and therefore you know how big a prophet he became. First Samuel uh, 226 I think yeah and Jesus himself grew with the favor of God and the stature of God Luke 252 says favor of God is big you know why because it's an undeserving grace undeserving mercy you don't somebody doesn't deserve that you should repay their loan that you should redeem them praying that ransom what they are bound to pay but you walk in their home and you give the paycheck of half a million dollar and saying that Hey, banker, do not touch his property. Take this money and redeem the property. I'm redeeming the property on his behalf. And you present it to him for free. And the poor fellow says, Master, I will not be able to pay that half a million dollar even if, I, if my fourth generations will have to work for you. And he says, and you say, no, I don't need that half a million dollar. This is a gift. Take it. This belongs to you. And you take him to the registration office and you register it in, in, in his name. And you make this property, you make him as the owner of the property. Yeah, there is nowhere in the records that your name is featuring, but it's his name. You understand? That's how Jesus redeems us and gives it back to us, all that you have lost. Your peace, your health, your wealth, your, dis you know, uh, what is it, your, your, your job, your business. All your losses are restored and your failures are turned to success and, yeah, your poverty-stricken situation changes to pro to get transformed to prosperity, and then over a period of time you forgot who this Jesus is, yeah, who redeemed you, and then again you become a debtor. Never ever think Jesus is going to come for the second time. That's what Bible says in Psalm 139: "I will not strive with the spirit of man forever; neither will I hold my anger." If God is angry, He walks off your life. And let's see who comes to save you this time, huh? Devil is a destroyer. You're already in the deprived state and uh, state of destruction. He would enjoy. He's not a. He's not the savior. 
Jesus is the only Savior who saves you and me. And you need the favor of God. And who gets the favor of God? Those that shall walk in reverence and in the reverence and in the fear of God. Because they are the men of wisdom. Psalm 111, 10. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Bible says. And those that shall walk in that fear of God shall obtain mercy and favor. Yeah, you shall eat the old harvest and clear out the old because of the new. Leviticus 26, 10. Clear out because clear out uh, because of the new new blessings will come in, right? Not just the materialistic, but even the new anointing. You get the new gifts of the Holy Spirit, and then all things are passed away. You're born, you're you're a new creation, born again, and and God ensures God ensures that your old things are replaced with new blessings. I will set my tabernacle among you, and I my my soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my, pe my people. What a privilege if God walks into your home. As how Abraham was sitting at the gates and three men walked into, your, into his home. He recognized Father, Son and the Holy Spirit and he offered a bull to them and then he made them eat. He treated them very well. What a privilege, right? You all believe that God walks in your home? What makes you not to believe is your sin. Yeah, you are very clear. Your soul is aware of your uh, state of mind. Huh? State of your soul is so bad. Why? Because you have mingled with the world. And God is not going to be your friend. God is not going to be your father. But he is going to be your adversary. Because God hates and he cannot withstand sin. His eyes are eyes of purity. Zechariah 4.10 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt that you should not be their slaves. I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you walk upright. Once upon a time you were sick, now God healed you. Once upon a time you were poverty stricken, but now God prospered you. Once upon a time you were unmarried, but God gave you a very good wife, a very good husband. Once upon a time you were barren, God blessed you with children. Now you are saying, oh, I am very busy with taking care of the children. How long it will take for God to take back those children? God would never do that. But then never forget that importance, that reverence, yeah, the priority. And never forget, he's the Lord God who brought you out of that deprived situation, that circumstance where the whole world ridiculed you. You were a mockery before people and the society. You were a social stigma. But if you do not obey me, and do not observe all these commandments. Verse number 15, Leviticus 26, 15. And if you despise my statues, and so the uh, statues, or if your soul abhors my judgment so that you do not perform all my commandments but break my covenant, I also will do this to you. Same to you. Some people say, no. <laughs> Good morning. Same to you, you say. Something like that. You want to ditch God? God says, same to you. I will ditch you. <laughs> you want to become a, be a rebel to God? God says, same to you. I will be a rebel to you. I will be a rebel to you. Huh? You want to challenge God, is it? I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease and fever, which, cause, which will consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Your enemies, that's a sad thing that happened that could happen to any children of God. I cannot, I cannot, uh, you know, when, even when I think of this, a person who walked with God once upon a time now walks in deception and then the, and the devil takes away everything and then his children are begging on streets and his wife turns to be a prostitute to save the family. Why? Because this guy has almost become useless. What a situation. Once upon a time, the family used to attend service in the church. Nowadays, they're somewhere thrown across the streets of that city. You don't want that situation. Nobody would love that situation. But you are there. It's not because of God. It's because of your negligence, your ignorance. I'll set my face against you and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who shall hate, you shall reign over you and you shall flee. And no one pursues you. I would like to stop there. And that's good enough.
right? Although it may sound like an old covenant, but I'm telling you, beloved, this is even applicable to the new covenant people. And that's why I always compare it with the current uh, people, I mean, the current era and the people with the modern trend and the mindset and all that. It applies to you. And that's why I'm giving you a lot of practical illustrations. And even from old covenant, I gave you a few verses. Please take enough attention of all that we discussed today and preached from the word of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your one, for this wonderful time and opportunity and fellowship. We appreciate your mercies and we glorify your name, your, your only son who came to this world, lived and died and rose again for us through whose name that is deliverance. We thank you and we appreciate you. Help us to walk in light. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Subscribe to our channel. Get access to all our playlists. Share it with your friends, near ones, dear ones. And you also please spend time to listen. Right? This is all going to help you. It builds you spiritually. It gives you a new perspective to live a very meaningful life, a very good spiritual life. Yeah? And continue to remember me and our ministries in your prayer. I need that fellowship. Yeah, I need your prayer. I'm asking nothing else. May God bless you and see you soon. Take care. God bless.